Five women found dead within a span of three months. They were all killed by one person. A woman, in fact. How did they die? There were no visible marks on the bodies, no entry wounds, no signs of assault. But the autopsy did confirm that there was one thing found in their system. A deadly poison. Cyanide. Here is the twisted tale of Cyanide Malika, India's first convicted female serial killer. In this series of India's deadliest serial killers, we take a look at some of the most deranged and elusive ones like Charles Sobraj or Dr. Death. But unlike most serial killers who are sociopaths, Cyanide Malika's is a story of greed, power and killing to climb up the social ladder. KD Kempama was reportedly a resident of Kagali Pura, a small village on the outskirts of Bangalore. The accounts of her life vary, but the way she killed all her victims remained the same. Let's start with who Kempama was. Some reports state that she worked as a house help, but it wasn't long before she resorted to stealing from her various employers' homes. She was soon caught and eventually served one year in jail for those crimes. Crimes which seem pretty trivial in light of what she would go on to do. Around the time that she was in jail or shortly after, her husband, who was a tailor, left her. When she was released from prison, she started her own chit fund business, but soon that collapsed. She now found herself with no husband, no business, and at that time, she was also thrown out of her family home. And it's this time where Cyanide Malika was born. Between 1998 and 2007, Kempama, aka Cyanide Malika, is suspected of having killed at least six women, most of which were in Karnataka. And she did it in a very methodical way. Cyanide was her way to increase her wealth and the means by which she carried out all the murders was the same. Kempama would go to the local temple every day and study who these people were. Their comings and goings, what they were suffering from, did they come from affluent backgrounds? She would then disguise herself and approach them as a holy woman, willing and offering her help through their troubles. By this point, she knows everything about her victims, knows they are in pain and knows that they desperately want to feel better. She would then suggest conducting a mandala puja, which she promised would cure them and solve all their problems. She would also ask them to dress up, wear their finest clothes, put on their most expensive jewelry, best shoes, etc. Kempama would then invite them to an isolated place at the edge of town, usually a temple, a place she knows the women would not be familiar with. She would then start the puja and ask them to close their eyes and pray. Then she would serve them something like holy water or some food item. Little did her victims know that whatever they were given was laced with cyanide and it would be the last thing that touched their lips. Malika's first victim was a rich woman, said to be in her 30s, killed on the outskirts of Bangalore in either 1998 or 1999. The reports vary. Reports also state that Kempama's victims were always wealthy women, often a little bit older and at most times sporting expensive jewelry or fine clothes. All of them were suffering either physical ailments or going through some emotional torment. Some reports stated that there was a woman with asthma who wanted to get well and there was a 59-year-old mother whose son was missing and who was desperate to find him. See, she was very good with covering her tracks as well. She would always change her identity after each murder. In 2000, she was caught and arrested for stealing valuables from a home. Kempama was there to perform a ceremony during which the woman screamed and then was rescued by her relatives. But for this crime, she only spent six months in jail. After this incident, reports show that Kempama didn't kill anyone for around six to seven years, at least not that we know of. But in 2006, 2007, she went on a killing spree, taking the lives of at least three more women. Among the victims was a Bangalore resident named Renuka. Her body was found in a guest house and according to police reports, the murderer's name was Jayamma, who was later discovered to actually be Kempamma. While the investigation was still on for Renuka's murder, the police were searching for a woman named Jayamma, who was actually Kempamma and who had already killed her next victim, Nagveni. A woman who was childless and looking for help. An easy prey for Sayanai Malika. In her now established MO, Kempama took Nagdeni to an isolated temple for a special prayer and fed her the cyanide poison. Around 2008, the police caught and arrested Sayanai Malika as she was about to escape with Nagdeni's jewelry. The name Sayanai Malika stuck because she had introduced herself under her new identity, Malika, to her last victim and the police. Sainai Malika was arrested around 2008, was tried and then sentenced to death in 2012. Her death penalty was commuted to a life sentence later on 
at a Bangalore jail. She was reportedly the first person to be sentenced to death in Karnataka. She is still currently serving out her life sentence in Bangalore. Weirdly enough, Kempama hit the news again when she shared a neighboring cell with Sasi Kala, who was former Tamil Nadu CM Jayalalitha's political aide. Sainan and Malaka stands as one of India's worst and most devious serial killers. Until today, the full extent of her victim list is still seeming to be unknown. But at least we can all rest assured that she's not getting out of jail anytime soon. Did you enjoy this video? If you did, you should check out the others in the series about Charles Sobraj, the bikini killer, and Santosh Paul, Dr. Death, who buried his victims in his backyard. And of course, like and share the video, and do comment below on who you'd like us to cover next.